and welcome to Spotlight with Kimmy. Today on the Spotlight, I have Bobby Dylan. Now, Bobby is the founder of Sapna Toronto. He also has a page on Instagram called Bobby Empath, on which he speaks about various mental health issues. And he also has a little, I'm going to say, obsession with beard oils or beard products. So he has another page called Beard is Life. So let's welcome Bobby Dylan. Hi, Bobby. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you, Kimmy? Good. It's nice to start my show back up recently. Yeah. I've been on a little delay, like some personal delays, but now I'm, I'm back to it. So it feels good. How about you? Um, like, I'm on the same boat as you. I've been you know, <clears throat> busy with other things as well. And so um, it's just all part of like what we do, especially when it comes to COVID. And, you know, we're trying to keep creative while trying to stay sane so i totally get it and um yeah that's that's kind of like i feel like you know you and i were kind of like in the same boat when it comes to that kind of stuff so yeah no i i feel that that's completely true and it's funny a lot of people asked me hey what happened to your show why did you stop and they think i was being lazy but it's not even lazy there's this feeling this unmotivation i i, I didn't have the motivation recently yeah, I don't know if it's like COVID related, meaning I, I don't want to blame anything, but I just yeah. don't feel that desire recently. Well, you know what, like you do, like consistency is everything, right? And, you know, when it comes to things that we do, like it's, we have like a, you know, we, 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 we go up and then we go down. And so it's kind of like, you know, we always think to ourselves, what's the next thing? And I think that when we go down, um, we're kind of like lost in our own thoughts and we get lost and, you know, um, on maintaining things. And so that's just a big part of it too. You just kind of have to keep going. You have to keep at it. And then once you keep at it, you're, uh, you'll, you'll find yourself rising back up again. So, yeah. Yeah, that's true. What keeps you motivated? Oh man. Um, a lot of things keep me motivated, but, um, but I think what keeps me motivated at the end of the day is understanding your purpose and understanding the why behind it. Um, and just, and also the big picture of things. Sometimes like when you get demotivated, you are bogged down with the small picture, but a lot of times we're not thinking about the big picture. So when we go back and think about the big picture, um, we always have to like, look at it from that sense. So that's the angle that you have to look at things in life. Um, I don't know. Do you watch Disney movies? Yes, I do. Okay. Have you seen the movie soul? It just came out. It just came out. No, I was going to watch it. I haven't okay. yet. Uh, I want you to watch that movie like today. <laughs> so I watched it last night and I'm going to watch it again. And I think, you know, you know, when it comes to finding motivation, I think it's a great, it's, it's a great movie. And especially like when you're trying to teach that lesson to children, um, motivation is not taught in schools. And so, and I think that Disney did a good job in actually um, aligning motivation and aligning, you know, your craft, your dreams and things that, you know, you, that, that keeps you motivated. And sometimes the, um, the um environment around you will demotivate you but i just think that like as long as you like i said get back to what i said before is that as long as you think about the big picture then you'll find your motivation coming back up i agree and i will watch that movie today i strangely i just saw like a little clip of it yesterday i'm like no i need to watch this and then you brought it up today so it is meant to be <laughs> yeah for sure and so yeah well bobby I admire all the things you do. That's something I admire about you is that you're always doing so many different things, multitasking, and you get yourself involved in a lot. And that's, that's something that that's not many people can do. Yeah, I see. Um, it's, it's tough, but like I said, it's, um, there's like one, like one thing that I'm kind of guilty about is spreading myself thin. And um, whenever I spread myself thin, you know, I might find myself burning out from time to time. But whenever you spread yourself and you keep doing things, you will always have an opportunity. If you don't do anything, then, you're, then you will, your work will never get recognized and your work will never get noticed. And therefore, there will be no opportunity for you or there'll be little opportunity. So that's, what, that's how I, that's, I'm not saying that's the way to go. I'm just saying that's my way of thinking. <laughs> People might have their own ways of thinking, but at the end of the day, that's my opinion. No, I agree. The more you experience, the more you embrace, the more you, um, as you said, get opportunities. If we're just sitting and doing nothing, what are we going to really experience? Yeah, 100%.
Um, so one of the, the people know you more as the founder of Sapna Toronto. Now, people who don't know what that is, I wanted you to tell my viewers a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah, so Sapna Toronto, um, it's, what it is, it's a platform, it's a professional platform for South Asians. And at the beginning of everything, when I thought about this concept, um, you know, you and I, like we both, well, I don't live in Scarborough anymore, but um, living in Scarborough, being a Punjabi person or uh, in Scarborough, you align with different um, South Asian communities that you don't really, um, communicate with on a daily basis. Um, you know, I'm not your typical Brampton Punjabi guy where you only have like one, you know, or like a dominant, you know, culture. Um, but I just think that Brampton is really good when it comes to having more of a diversity in terms of South Asian. And so that's one part of it. So that's one area of what helped me kind of, you know, trigger the whole South Asian versus, you know, being the Punjabi, you know, so I think I want to kind of like look beyond the Punjabi and look and kind of look back to see what, you know, our actual roots are as a South Asian community. Um, I've, I've been, you know, blessed to connect with different communities such as, you know, the Sri Lankan community, the Pakistani community, the Ghani community and I just find that you know at the end of the day we really don't you know there's no difference between you and I there's no you know we are we you know our 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 background is really similar where we are the children or or we might be immigrants ourselves you know we're the children of immigrants or we might be immigrants ourselves meaning that we go through the same struggle when it comes to things you know you are looking to uh, fulfill the life in Canada and you're looking to fulfill your goals and you're looking to, you know, cherish the opportunities that this, you know, this country gives you at the end of the day. And by doing that, you're able to align yourselves with the professional side of things. You're able to, you know, elevate yourself and you're able to um, improve yourself in whatever you do. And that's one big part of something at Toronto is to not only interact with different communities, but to also uh, find ways to network, meet different people, uh, communicate with different people and finding ways to better yourself. And that's like a big uh, part of something at Toronto is the betterment of the community, not just the connectivity of the community. So, um, before, when I first started Sub Toronto, it was all about connectivity. Now it's more about improvement. You know, what can we do to improve ourselves and what can we do to become a better community at the end of the day? So that's, uh, you know, Sub Toronto in a nutshell altogether. What we've done, um, you know, we've done a lot of mixers. We've, um, a lot of events, a lot of events that are relatively themed um, along, alongside of what South Asians can uh, adapt to. For example, um, our very first event was called South Asians with Style. And so, and the reason why that was really cool is because we wanted to bring the professional environment and align the sense of style. So we're kind of like aligning the, um, the professional with the, I guess the, the, um, the aesthetic part of being a professional, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something that we did. Um, we brought in Jagmeet Singh, um, and who was, you know, we brought in Jagmeet Singh, we brought in Sonia Gill. Um, these are the two people that I have a lot of gratitude for because they were the people who believed in us. And then ever since then, we just kept going. And going back to, you know, what we talked about before, keep motivated is I always looked at the big picture. And, and like I said, there were times where I was like, man, what am I doing with this? <laughs> and so, but then it was all about the big picture at the end of the day. And um, yeah, unfortunately due to COVID, we couldn't do any events. The last event that we did is an event that you attended back in February. Uh, and that was about, you know, finding love, not love with somebody else, but love within yourself and aligning love with, you know, the professional side with yourself. And I just think that's really important to embrace uh, as a professional, it's not just about, you know, finding the good, finding the right career or finding the, you know, or being the best entrepreneur. It's about loving yourself. And I just think that that's a big part of being a South Asian professional. And going back to the movie Soul, I'm finding different roots in our conversation is that we have to find our purpose and we have to love what we do. Um, you know, we might work hard to become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, whatever it might be, but ask yourself, is that what you want to do? And is, or is that something that society wants you to do? So break, be, break the doors or break the barriers of what societal norms and go based on what you want to do to become a better professional. So that goes with the improvement side of Southern Toronto. Wow. Now that's something everyone needs to learn is how to unlearn everything we were taught and really go for what our soul wants. Yeah, it's a tidbit of, um, of, of, of everything. But at the end of the day, it's all about happiness. And and I'm all about, you know, finding fulfillment in life, um, finding the right fulfillment. Wow, oh, that was nice. Um, I wanted to know, what do you say was your greatest struggle while building this community? 
uh, people to believe in me. <laughs> um, I guess in this case, see, here's the thing. I am, I'm from, I'm from Hamilton, Ontario. I'm, I am new to, I am newish to Toronto. Like I, I came, I came to Toronto. Well, I went to school in Toronto, then I moved back home. And then I, I refled to Toronto um, after I got married. And then uh, being here, like I was basically that guy who was going around shaking hands and people didn't know who I was. Well, who are you? Like, and who is this guy? It's kind of like, um, do you listen to rap music? Yes, I do. <laughs> no, J. Cole. Sorry, I couldn't hear J. you. J. Cole. Yes, um, yes, I do. Not Jay. that much. So yeah. I don't it's kind of, I, I like to align myself with, I like to basically relate myself to J. Cole because J. Cole was, like his story was rather similar where he was this kid from from uh, uh, from North Carolina or South Carolina, I'm not sure. If it was yeah, whatever. It was. But, he, but he basically came here and nobody knew who he was. Nobody knew who he was. He's like going around like, who are you? Like people were kind of questioning, who are you? Wanted to become a rapper and all that kind of stuff. But he had to, you know, speak volumes based on his talent. So by doing this, um, I had to speak volumes based on what I can do for the community. I don't, I feel as if in a community itself, I wasn't, I wasn't asking for things I was giving. And so I was, I was giving the community, you know, I was giving people opportunities. I was giving, you know, free events. I was giving, you know, um, a platform of people to speak their story. And that's the whole thing about, you know, branding is the fact that it was all about giving you come across people in society where they would come to you and they'll ask you things they would want something from you i wasn't i wasn't really that person i was a person who would just give and then that's what kind of helped you know me align something in toronto with the concept of giving because you know at the end of the day um we ended up becoming the largest south asian um platform in all of north america we ended up, you know, connecting so many people. We ended up, you know, creating a community for ourselves. And that all came from the concept of giving, not from taking. Well, you did a great job. And it, just to see the progress and where you are today, you should be proud. <laughs> yeah, but at, at the end of the day, it is a work in progress. Nobody's perfect. And I don't want to, the last thing I want to be is the perfect organization. I'm nowhere near perfect and no, I'm nowhere near special. It's a matter of just being, doing things with a passion, with passion, with a purpose and with a good heart at the end of the day. Um, I know there's COVID now, but do you have any specific future goals for Subnatron or any vision you have in mind? I do, but if I talk about them, then I have to hold myself accountable. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's cool. But, we don't yeah. have to talk about them. Yeah, I do, but <laughs> I don't it's like I'm talking to like it's it's, it's like a, I'm 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 just kidding, but like it's like a question that a parent would ask you. So, Bobby, what's what, what are you gonna do with your life? And then if I say something, it'll come back a year later. So, Bobby, what happened to that thing you said you're gonna do? <laughs> like, what, what 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 happened? Like like you know you told me this, so then what happened? <laughs> I'm really kidding. I'm really kidding. No, I do. I do. At the end of the day, so my, the goals that I have for something in Toronto is to, um, you know, more or less be recognized on a mass scale. You know, that's something that I want to do. Um, I've been, you know, one of the things that I want to do is I want to do more charity work and I want to do more things to kind of help, um, you know, other, you know, other, organi other organizations or things that are being done on a global scale as well. I just feel as if like people that are successful are the people that give back. And um, when it comes to things that I want to do is I want to do more, like I said, more charitable work, like what's happening in India right now. I'm really, really um, firm with my thoughts on the farmers that are being mistreated in India. And, you know, if there, the one thing that I really want to work on are some campaigns, especially within 2021, is some more campaigns, what we can do to help the farmers in India. Because, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's my roots. It might be a little selfish of me because that is my background, being Punjabi and being of, you know, of a farmer's background itself. But at the end of the day, it does affect the subcontinent, even though it's not 
even though it's not necessarily a Canadian issue, but it is an issue that has a lot to do with my roots and a lot of the roots of many people that support Subna Toronto. So I just feel as if like, you know, that's something that I would like to, you know, align myself and be a part of. I'm already, you know, trying to speak with different organizations that are doing things as well. Um, and I haven't, like, I'm still working on that. It's a work in progress, but that's something that I, you know, want to do with Subna Toronto. So it all goes, all comes back with the gift of giving. Um, I want to do more things that, to recognize more talents within the South Asian community. And of course, growth is a big part of it. And by growing is, again, by giving back. And that's something that will continue to be a part of Southern Toronto, you know, from now and forever. I can resonate with that. The purpose I had for the show was to give recognition to people as well. So I, I feel you on that. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate that a lot. Um, Bobby, Apart from Sapna Toronto, I know from where me and you connected to was from your other page or the other thing you do is Bobby Empath, yeah. um, where you're sharing mindfulness and um, things about mental health issues. And that's something I'm very passionate about as well. Um, mm. Just in case someone has not checked out that page, you should check it out now. <laughs> I mean, after watching the rest of this. Yeah. Um, so how did you think of the idea of starting that page or where did that stem from? It's, um, it means a lot because it's something that I was doing, like, even though I recognize what I've done right, but there are things that I've done wrong in my life mm -hmm. and by and things that I've, things that I've done wrong and basically like addressing things that I've done wrong. And, you know, it's not anything that's totally negative, but it's things that I've done that I ended up just hating myself for, you know, whether it's, you know, things that are family related or related to society or even things that I've done to hold myself, I have to hold myself accountable for things. I was, I found myself in situations where I've hit extreme, extreme, um, you know, burnout from what I'm doing and that's okay. I had to tell myself that that's okay. You know, Bobby, you're busy. You're doing too many things. You know, you are the breadwinner of the family. You have two kids. You support a lot of people. You're doing something at Toronto. You're working nine to five. You want to do more things. Now you want to do this beard company. I'm not advertising. <laughs> I'm not advertising. And so, and so um, but you keep going. You keep burning yourself out. But at the same time, it's okay to, you know, to identify the fact that you, that I, you know, that I burnt out. Um, sometimes my interactivity on social media is not as much as it used to be before. Um, I, I'm, what I want to do with social media is more or less social good, you know, do, do what's good for social media. Um, and then I started to identify things that were, that were going wrong with social media. I have two kids and I don't know what social media is going to be like when they get older. And these were, this came, this comes back to like learning about things going, going, going back to things related to, men, related to mental health is that social media can be a big factor around mental health. You know, it became a big comparison game. People are putting their lives out on social media. People, um, I, I, I speak to people who, um, are, who are so invested in social media to a point where it becomes their life, but are not really understanding the reality. They're not looking at the, it's, it's a big iceberg. Um, um, like it's, it's like, it's, it's like the iceberg effect, right? So mm -hmm. whatever you see is a tip of the iceberg, but what you don't see in a person's perfect life that you want to compare yourself to on social media is, you know, the struggles, you know, you know, the, the, their depressions, their own, you know, their own depressions and whatnot. I'm going to give you a little bit of a spoiler in the movie Soul. Okay. So, mm -hmm. but it's nothing good. But there's a part in this, there's a part in Soul where a person is so negative and a person is so, um, they're, they're basically speaking negative about somebody and the response back to them was, um, it's unfortunate that you're thinking this way because you wanna put other people down to cover things that you're unhappy with in your life. So when you come across people like that, like it, I have to really take, you know, um, I, have to, I, I basically like to call people out when it comes to negativity and what they do, especially when it comes to cyberbullying or online mm -hmm. bullying. If you are putting people down online, there is something about you that you are not happy with. 
And I even, I remember I did even a call out to people that were cyber bullies. I said, if you're a cyber bully and if you were doing things such as body shaming, talk to me and I will help you out with this. So you I want that I, for me as well. I did. Um, <laughs> you did and I, that for me. Yeah. And I know there's one jerk that basically called Kimmy out that I'm like, listen, whatever Kimmy's doing right now, you won't do it yourself. Okay. You're not, you won't do it yourself. You won't have the courage what Kimmy is doing, but putting herself out there and, and spreading the message of positivity, getting people involved, having her to elevate her passions online, using social good, not using social media to show off or using social media to, you know, com to basically com compare how your life is great. Her life is probably better than some of the multi multi-million dollar celebrities that are out there because she comes from a family that's really happy. Her dad, I, mean, I, I really want to meet her dad because her dad is a celebrity to me. And so, you know, these are things that, you know, you have to recognize when it comes to Kimmy and her background is that you don't need to have, you know, a lavish life. You, need, you know, a happy life is better than a lavish life. And that's something that I have, you know, a lot of passion towards when it comes to um, mental health. Going back to the concept of mental health is that I really, really love talking about heartbreaks. And... Heartbreaks is something that, and it's funny because people that are coming that are pushing me when it, for mental health are men that had their heart broken. Going back to social media is that they've been doing things such as looking up their ex on, online, looking up on their stores to see how great their life is and how, you know, they're enjoying and they're, they have a happy life without them. But back again, back again to the iceberg effect is that you only see the tip of the iceberg. You don't know. Um, you know, the, like sometimes the grass isn't always green on the other side. So don't, don't get sucked into the lives of other people on social media. Be happy. Find peace within yourself. Find your own inner happiness. Because when it comes to mental health, we are so dependent on things to make us happy. Mm -hmm. We're so dependent on, you know, everything is temporary. Everything is temporary. People, you know, things are temporary. Um, you know, like that microphone that wasn't working before that you had, that's temporary. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, people, um, you know, people change. People change with the seasons. People, people that your best friend today might not be your best friend, you know, a year from now. I'm not saying that, they, that they're going to be your enemy, but people drift. But that doesn't mean that you can't sustain a level of happiness every time. If there's something that made you happy in life, that happiness was not because of a person, a, a person or an object. That happiness was because of you. The happiness was there before the object or the person. If it was, if it was there before the person, it can be there after. So always find the happiness within you to put yourself first. Other things related to mental health that I was doing wrong was I remember finding myself in situations where I was chasing people that did not want anything to do with me. I was loving those who did not love me. Why was I loving them? Because I was seeking validation. Seeking validation from others. Going back to social media is that many people who are so regular on certain things are those or can be people that are seeking validation. If I can't get happiness within me, I'm gonna put a social media post up and see how many likes I get, because that will make me happy, because it's the validation of others. We shouldn't be thinking that way. And that's something that we need to teach the youth about happiness and about mental health. Mental health is something that we really need to teach children in school. Mm -hmm. And you know, happiness. And you know, going back to many other things that they should be teaching, you know, children in school is that um, learning hearing about stories of people that you know have committed suicide. And the last thing they did was go on social media before they committed suicide. You know, that stuff, you know, really doesn't sit well with me because these are people that could have, you know, sought help. Also, going back to the concept of social good is that I always, always want to enforce people to go out there and talk about things that are bothering you in a non, in a safe environment. There are so many different, there are so many safe environments where you can talk about things that you're going through. And a conversation can not only change your life, a conversation can save your life. Because if you did not talk about that, then you would think that this is life, this is me, this is it for me. And therefore, the last thing I want anybody to think about is to you know, put their life on the line based on negative thoughts that are just temporary. The, the most, um, 
also when we when we're not when we're not behaving a certain way if we're angry or sad or whatever it might be we're not thinking straight <laughs> you know when people are angry they do things when people they, they get anxious when people mm -hmm. you know when people feel anxious they do things they say things that are really not them yes the, the authentic side of you is the happy side of you so that goes back to the whole concept of mental health is why why happiness is so important so i know i'm kind of going on a bit of a tangent right now oh no, no i love this <laughs> <laughs> that's another reason i connect with you is because everything you're saying it's stuff that plays in my mind all the time so um you you just the way you're conveying your message is beautiful and i'm happy that other people will listen to this I appreciate that. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done with mental health. I just think that there's never, it's never a competitive space. The more people talking about mental health, the more hands we're joining together in term with mental health and the more work we're doing to spread awareness for mental health. And that's really important. And, and it's really know, important. Exactly. You never know who needs to hear it. Like on Instagram, I'm following so many pages that just, you know, give out good positive messages or telling you that it's okay to feel how you're feeling everything because sometimes you open your phone and you're feeling a certain way and you read something and it reminds you it re-reminds you of how it's okay to feel how you're feeling that's always what i tell myself it's okay i don't okay. always have to feel yeah you know <laughs> I'm not, i was gonna say it's okay to not be okay yes <laughs> so i'm grateful to all those people who post uplifting messages because that's what we need not any more criticism and if it is criticism it's for the right intention not for putting someone down as you mentioned before yeah like because you know like then your purpose your if, if you're putting people down then your purpose in life is to is other people hmm. that's your purpose in life is for other people you live for other people you're not living for yourself you know is that living I don't think that's living. I don't, I don't think, I don't think you're really doing things, you know, for, you know, for your own. And so like you're, you know, and, and I just feel as if like, you know, you don't, you, you really need help when you have that way of thinking. And so that's just like a big, that's, that's kind of like how I feel about people who behave that way. Sorry, I keep touching my beard. So. <laughs> that's okay. Cause that's our next topic. <laughs> oh, okay. You're putting perfect perfect transition. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Well, you already touched that. This is, not a stage, this is not a stage conversation. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a great transition. I didn't even have to speak about it. You just, you just made the transition for me. Um, okay, so you already mentioned before, so it's not a surprise now, but you have another page. Yes, I do. Called Beard is Life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I can all relate um, to, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, to be honest, Bearded's life is like, um, it's really, really time pass. Like it's really, <clears throat> honestly, it's, it, that was, com it's complete boredom. It's complete time pass. And, um, quite frankly, like it, what ended up happening with Bearded's life is so, it's so funny because I remember I got approached by a company in North Carolina. They contacted me because I was doing some tutorials on beard products. I remember I, the first the first first tutorial that I did was a hemp beard balm and it smelled like shit. Like it was so sorry, excuse my language, but it was so bad. Like it was it was terrible to and I didn't even want like my first review to be that way. And ever since then, I'm, I, and again, I didn't see the big picture with things. I was just like, oh god. Like it was it was like it, it was so bad to a point where I had to wash my beard twice to get that nasty stench out of my beard. It was so bad. Is this why and, you made your own things? Well, it's part of it because the, what ended up happening was I ended up thinking, okay, so I'm okay. I own, I have over twenty five beard oils. Wow. Yeah, I have a problem. <laughs> I have, I have a problem, like, and, and the reason why, like, it, it all came, and the thing is, I haven't, like, I, I have, I've only been bearding for over maybe, for like maybe 16 months, like, this whole thing of having a beard was just like, it just came because I, I felt like maybe it was just a change of scenery for me, I don't know, and I love it. I ended up loving this whole beard thing, and I ended up loving beard oils, and I ended up getting, I developed a new passion when it came to beard oils, and then I started to start my own line. <laughs> I mean, everything doesn't have to have this heavy meaning to it. There's something that makes you happy and you're just doing it. 
it makes me happy and then it does like i just feel as if like there's nothing better than like a fresh smelling beard and then maybe when your dad's ready he's ready to, then like i can yeah i'll be happy to give your dad some beer oils and all that kind of stuff when he's ready to grow his beard out i think your dad can really really rock a beard I mean, that's just ask him why does he never why hasn't he ever had a beard he only has a mustache yeah, now it's time for him to start. Like, you know, tell him to get a beard out, you know, tell him to just start growing his beard out and all that, you know, be like Bilu 2.0 with his beard and, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, okay, so basically on this page, you're, what exactly are you doing? I'm sorry, I didn't look into it that much. <laughs> oh, okay, I was gonna say, sorry, I, I, then I, got, I confused myself. What exactly is what? Um, your page, you made your own line, right? Oh, yeah. It's called the Woodsman Beard. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm going to follow you right now on Instagram. <laughs> Just so you can look at it. One second. I'm going to follow you right now. Um, I'm a good reminder to follow me on Instagram and click subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to do that as well. So, uh, all right. So, I got Kim right here. And yeah, we're live too, which is even funnier. So, okay, there we go. Okay. All right. So, followed you there. All right. Notification. Okay. There you go. Follow back. But, like, what can we on this? But that's okay. Okay. Yeah, cool. There wow. we go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't want to bore everyone by me looking at my social media. Oh, no, it's okay. It's totally fine. So, what it is, it's beard oils and I, 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 I started my own line of beard oils and beard bombs. Beard bomb. Yeah. So if you want to know the difference between, so beard oil conditions and softens your beard and the beard bomb is what gives it like, you know, st structure and t structure and like gives it that definition. And it's, yeah. And yeah, that's basically what, you know, what, what the woodsman beard is all about. But going back, but this whole thing resonated from COVID because during COVID, I thought to myself, okay, so we need to find a new passion. And, you know, beard oils and beard products became a passion. I thought, why can't I, why not just, you know, start my own? So I, I put a lot of R&D into what I was doing. And then, um, like I said, it, it was a lot of trial and error too. I tried doing different ways of making it myself. And I remember I used peppermint oil and I used a little too much and my, my face was literally like it was burning so bad. Again, another, you know, failed experiment when it came to beard oils. And so I kind of had to work with the supplier and um, work with the supplier and finding the right, the, the right um, um, mixture with my supplier. And then ever since then, I just, I uh, created it then. Yeah. Then I created um, my own line after that. So everything just kind of, one, it, it, once, one thing led to another, and that's how it was. Also, in North York, I live in a very woodsy area. Um, my backyard is literally the woods. And um, that's when the whole woodsman beard came about. And so I thought, hey, you know, um, I embraced the woodsman life. And so I figured, hey, why not? Well, that sounds good. I'm, I have no knowledge about beard oils, but... That sounds like a good, good name. <laughs> yeah. no, but then again, like when you see when you think of a woodsman, you think about like a guy with a big beard. And so, you know, that's, uh, that comes along with it. I haven't even reached my beard, length, you know, the right beard length yet. So I'm still working on that. So we'll see what happens a year from now. Okay. When I get part two with the Kimmy interview. Yeah. <laughs> progress. Yeah. Beard yeah. progress episode. Beard progress. There you go. <laughs> Hashtag beard progress. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, wow, we went from Sapna Toronto to mental health to beard. <laughs> beard, yeah. That, this was a conversation I was not prepared for. <laughs> I mean, those are some of the best conversations. Exactly. The ones, so that's good. Tell me something that most people do not know about you. Okay, I was going to say I own 25 beard oils, so that's out of the question. So... <laughs> I mean, um, so what most people don't know about me. Um, Something random. It doesn't have to be a big deal. Okay. What most people don't know about me is I'm actually a failed YouTuber. Oh. Yeah. I know this. <laughs> yeah. And this is and this is what kind of this kind of what gravitated me towards your dad because your dad is a YouTuber and more frequent. And I was based I had my own YouTube channel called Bobby Q which was barbecue. 
I watched one episode. You showed it to me. Yeah, yeah. So most people, and um, but but yeah, that's something that a lot of people don't know about me. I don't I don't, I don't always talk about it, but um, I've been I was doing it since two thousand nine. Well, that's when I first started, so over ten years ago. And um, but then I just stopped. Okay, so, what movie genre are you least likely to watch? Least likely to watch. That's a good question. I want to say romance. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not into romance movies because I think they're all phony. As, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't, really too it dramatic. Doesn't, it doesn't align, especially Bollywood romance. Oh God! I, like, okay, it's it's good to watch for entertainment, but then there are some scenes that I just that just makes me want to vomit. Like, let me ask you a question. Whenever you watch a Bollywood, especially when you watch an older Bollywood movie, mm-hmm. like, let me ask you a question. Maybe not a movie, but an actual scene. If you watch a movie from like the nineteen eighties or nineties, if I'm a hero, well, I'm the hero of the movie. All right. So let's just say I'm like you know Sunny Deol or Salman Khan or whatever it might be. Right. And so next thing you know, I'm I find the girl that I like. Wow. You know what I do to get her? I bother her. I follow her. Is that gonna work? No. Is that, that doesn't work. That's cool. <laughs> For me, it's annoying. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to annoy her to get you know to get her, to, and then I have to be this big macho guy. I'd be like, oh yeah, and then I'm like, no. belief systems, eh? That that are like engraved in people's minds. <laughs> yeah. And then next thing you know, I have to drive up to her house and then like, you know, tell her how much I love her. That's how much I love you. And then I have to like, you know, yell upon a mountain and all that kind of stuff. And then, yeah. Um, do you have a song that's stuck in your head lately? A uh, song that's stuck in my head lately. Uh, Doesn't have to be a good one. It can be anything. <laughs> yeah, it's Baby Shark because my kid's always watching Baby Shark. Seriously, people, they still watch that? I thought it was, I don't know. No, because my I have baby. Well, my kid always watches Baby Shark, so Baby Shark. Doo, 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 no, no, doo. I don't want it in my head. <laughs> baby Shark. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> Next question. And then they had a Christmas version where it was like Merry Christmas, Baby Shark. Yeah, anyways. but yeah, that's what's stuck in my head. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. It's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You don't have. It's it's okay. You don't have to. <laughs> um, do you remember your first celebrity crush, if you had one? My first celebrity crush, if I had one, yeah, that was probably Cindy Crawford back in the day. And she looks, fan- she still looks fantastic, even though she's hitting 60, but wow. Um, your favorite ice cream flavor? Favorite ice cream flavor is probably chocolate chip. No, no, chocolate chip cookie dough. Mm, okay. Um, what's your favorite drink? Um, alcohol or non-alcoholic? We'll go with alcohol. Okay, so I'm a big, I'm a beer drinker, so um, I do like my Peroni. Uh, Peroni beer is, um, it's Italian beer. Uh, so um, that's my favorite, that's obviously my favorite beer. Um, if it's a hard drink, then I will drink a gin and soda. Um, what is your greatest strength? the fact that I tell the truth. <laughs> so, yeah, I just think, I think honesty is my strength. I'm, and I'm, I'm a terrible liar. So what's the opposite is just telling the truth. So yeah. That's a great strength. Um, okay, so this one is important for you. Would you rather shave your head or your beard forever? Head. <laughs> it'll grow back and it'll grow back quick, but the beard, no. <laughs> um, is there a language that you want to learn? Um, Italian. Hmm. Yeah. So all these questions, I feel like elaborating on them and asking you why. <laughs> I want to stop. Um, the last book you read, if there is something. The last book I read was, what was the last book I read? It was actually a book that I, it was called Tumbling Dice. A month without your car or a month without internet? month without my car okay would you rather be decent in everything or incredibly talented in one thing um i'll probably just be decent at everything 
Um, be invisible or able to read minds? Read minds. I want to know why people want to be invisible. It's kind of disturbing. <laughs> um, would you rather forget who you were or who everyone else was? I'd rather forget what everyone else was. Um, last question. Describe yourself in three words. The best three words for you. Oh, man, this is tough. Um, Harry. <laughs> Honest. Another H word then, I guess. <laughs> Harry, honest. Um, Harry, honest and happy. Wow. But definitely Harry. <laughs> that was very harmonious. The whole three H words. Three H is Harry, honest and happy. <laughs> what a great combo. <laughs> Um, well, Bobby, thanks for being on my show. Um, I'm sure we can do this again one day and if we, we have other topics to talk about. Yeah, for sure. And I'm sorry for going into a rabbit hole about the movies. And so, um, now I yeah. know that's something you like to talk about. Yeah, yeah. But one thing about, yeah, cause I know I, I go into rabbit holes when I talk and, um, you know, I can talk for days. I remember one time when I ran into you at the, on the subway and we were, I was just laughing away. Like, so yeah. Hope I didn't annoy you. Like, well, oh my when you said subway ride went fast. Yeah. Okay. As long as it, well, as long as I'll be able to kind of keep you entertained during this, on the subway ride. So I'm happy. <laughs> No, you didn't bore me. It's actually good to people who come to my show. It's nice when they just go on talking because that means they're they feel engaged. And if you're feeling engaged, then people will feel engaged. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and um, tell your dad to collab with me one day. Like, um, yeah, whenever after COVID, uh, of course. And so I'm not I'm not too far away from you guys, but I'm happy to meet your dad. I'm I'm a big fan of your dad. I love. I'm a Bilu believer. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be so happy for this show. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, Kevin, thank you so much for having me on the show. And anything you need, let me know. Likewise. <laughs>